so again, use the two tanks that we were going to use on Sylvanas. Nothing changed there. Use five healers. This fight is absolutely brutal on your healers. Um, you need the raid cooldowns and you need throughput. Um, there's nothing else to it. Orbs deal a ton of damage. Malevolence deals a ton of damage. Um, you just need to be able to survive and you'll kill this fight. DPS. Um, there are two types of DPS that are extremely valuable on this fight. One is a DPS that brings a raid cooldown. So Havoc DH, you can run double Havoc DH. Um, Arms Warrior, double Arms Warrior, really good. Um, DK, if they're geared, AMZ is pretty useful. And then the second super valuable DPS on this fight is one that is extremely mobile. Windwalker monks can almost solo most of the orbs. Um, if you guys watched Limits Pull, Trill ran probably about 80% of the orbs, um, and then other DPS filled in. But Windwalker Monk can put in a ton of work carrying orbs off the side because they have so much mobility. Um, other than that, you just want good single target and DPS that deal good cleave um, because you want the orbs to get killed pretty quickly. Uh, for positioning, the way we did our strategy might not work anymore. So I'll tell you guys, um, if you guys watch Imperative, I think that is the strategy that you will have to rekill it with. Once more people get gear, it's a lot simpler. Um, or the strategy that Limit killed it with. So there was actually, even though Limit and us both mass dispelled, there was a difference in our strategies. So with Limit strategy, you had, um, let's say, your Demon Hunter and your Paladin. Both got the debuffs, yeah? Your raid is randomly stacked in the middle. You're just killing the boss. Where's Nizzle? Bam. Um, so raid is stacked. You're killing the boss. Your Paladin and your Demon Hunter gets the Malevolence debuff. Your Demon Hunter runs to the outside edge. Your Paladin runs to the inside edge. Everyone else stacks behind. Whoops. Is this? Behind them, you bring the boss in. And then you mass dispel these two players. So everyone gets knocked away. So with limit strategy, there was a 50% chance that... Okay, first of all, let me explain how mass dispel works or how it used to work. Mass dispel would dispel based on a GUID. GUID is a unique identifier number that a character gets whenever it's created. So if you server transfer or if you make a new character, you get a new GUID. Um, so for several mechanics, um, this can be pretty important. On this fight specifically, Mass Dispel works based on GUID. It dispels in order, even though there might be two people in the Mass Dispel, and to you it might look like they get dispelled at the exact same time, Mass Dispel actually goes down the list of GUIDs and dispels them in order of the list. So that is extremely important on this fight because obviously if you get dispelled, you knock the whole raid. So you had, with limit strategy, you have a 50% chance that when you mass dispel these two people, they both get knocked towards the center. On the other hand, there's a 50% chance that the paladin gets knocked towards the center and the demon hunter gets knocked towards the edge. So that means that you wanted to put the class that can cheese the knock on the edge. So demon hunters just fly back, um, warlocks can just port back, mages, I don't, mages can alter time, uh, let me see, okay, mages can alter time, monks can transcend, uh, warriors can charge or leap, you get the idea. If, if your class has a way of cheesing the knockback, you go on the outside. If your class does not have a way of cheesing the knockback, you go on the inside. So this is what Limit did, and it allowed them to mass this spell. Um, now, if you get unlucky, and let's say a Priest and a Paladin get the debuffs, neither of them are able to cheese the knockback. So you essentially have to dispel one, get knocked to the other side, 
like this, dispel the other, and get knocked back to the other side. Um, so that is pretty much what you have to do now. With our strategy, which again, I have to point out, it is no longer possible because they changed the way Mass Dispel works. Um, mass Dispel now dispels randomly inside um, of the Mass Dispel window instead of based on GUID. With our strategy, we positioned our players based on their GUID. So we made a weak aura that told the player to either go inside or go outside. So regardless of who got the two malevolence debuffs, you were able to use the mass dispel strategy. So even if like, you know, a paladin and a DK, a well, DK can actually cheese it. Like let's say a paladin and um, two paladins. Okay, we go with the worst case. Two paladins got the debuff. Even if two paladins got the debuff, as long as we were following our weak aura, we were able to mass dispel because they would always get knocked towards the center. Um, as long as they were positioned based on their GUID. So this is what they hotfixed about this fight. You're no longer able to do that. So you either have to do limit strategy, where the mobile class goes on the outside, um, who can knock the cheese, who can cheese the knockback, or you do the imperative strat where you just get ping ponged between sides. So kind of up to you on how you want to deal with that. Um, but it's important that you understand like why. We were able to mass dispel. Limit was able to mass dispel. I believe even Echo mass, mass dispelled. It was because there was a GUID cheese you could do with mass dispel. Um, other positioning is not that important on this fight. You pretty much just always want to drag the boss to the orbs, um, to cleave, and that's pretty much it. So another important thing is mass dispel or dispel in general timings. You never want to dispel the targets if there are puddles on the ground or if there's a tank mechanic happening. Unless your tank can cheese the knockback with like Death's Advance or if they're a Demon Hunter or a Monk, something like that. But if like our Paladin tank had to get the tank mechanic on the orbs, we would wait and delay the dispels. Let's take a look at the fight. Um, now that you know like kind of how to deal with the dispels, the next important thing is push timings. This boss will push to a new phase at 80%, 60%, and 40%. Every time he pushes to a new phase, he resets his timers. So you never want to push to a new phase like right as you got a mechanic. You never want to push to a new phase right as you got orbs. You never want to push to a new phase right as you got malevolence. Um, so you kind of have to play around that. For us, we kill the first set of orbs, knock them off, deal with the first set of dispels. As you can see, everyone's chilling on the boss, and there we go, we push the boss. We deal with the ma malevolence, then we push the boss. And that's kind of the timing that you want to do. Uh, so this is phase two. Um, phase two, you get a dodge, and then you should be getting orbs and then a malevolence. Uh, the cadence of this fight from phase two onwards is always kill the orbs, throw off the orbs off the edge, then deal with dispels. And then you just repeat that. Orbs, toss them off, dispels. Orbs, toss them off, dispels. Uh, and you'll see that we try to stick to that as much as possible. The later you go on the fight, the more orbs you get. So you have to kind of compromise and maybe only throw off one orb or two orbs before doing the spells. But early on, you just want to kill all the orbs, toss them off, then deal with the spells. So there it is. You get a set of orbs. Um, you always drag the boss to the orbs. And you always position the spells based on where the boss is with the orbs. Um, so right now, if we get uh, Malevolence, they would be running to one of these two close markers. Because that's where the raid is. As you can see, orbs are getting finished off. The boss is already pre-positioned where Malevolence is going to go. Orbs get tossed off. Malevolence dispels move to the edge. You wait out the, the puddles, then you dispel.
Uh, the Shatter Weak Aura tells you how much health you're going to have after you get hit by Shatter. Um, so on progression, Shatter was very dangerous, and if you had a Shatter and you were at low health, you would just die. So the Shatter Weak Aura just tells you if you're going to survive the Shatter, which is the phase transition. So it's not super accurate, so don't pay too much attention to it. Again, you get dispels, a tank hit, everyone moves, you get knocked back. Oh, sorry, the phase transition is 30%. I, I was said the wrong number. So it's not 40%, it's 30%. Uh, this is where you can see the shatter happening. And we actually pushed at a really bad time. We got the last set of orbs. You normally want to push the boss sub 30% 30, 30 before you get that set because then his timers reset and you're able to essentially deal most, more boss damage without having orbs to deal with. Um, so you just lust and you kill the boss. On this, once you're sub 30% and you lust, you don't hard focus orbs generally. Uh, you might hard focus one of them just to remove some raid damage, uh, but you just deal boss damage, cleave the orbs, and if they die, then you throw them off the side. But mainly you just want to focus on boss damage uh, because you want to kill the boss like shortly after you get your second set of orbs in the last phase. For us, obviously, it was a bit of a bad timing because we phased the boss with orbs up. But then the spells work the exact same way um, with an additional step. So you get the dispel, you get knocked. Then you have to move to the piece of armor that has the debuff. So right here, you can see this armor in the bottom right side corner uh, has the animation over it. So your whole raid needs to move there, stack behind it, because that debuff is going to time out and knock everyone back. So your whole raid is stacked there, get knocked, and then you just kill the boss. Um, from here on, you do not deal with any mechanics. You just kill the boss. Um, there's nothing else happening. Everyone's just taking a lot of damage there's a lot of warps up but just kill the boss and you're good to go